Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. This is James Tracy, MemoryHoleBlog.com, with the MHB News Brief. Boy, a lot of interesting stories. Really, so many to choose from, and uh, we only have so much time. I want to try to keep this as brief as possible, given the title of our program. First story up, Washington Post settles defamation lawsuit with Nick Sandman over viral video claims. This is from the Epoch Times. Nick Sandman, the high school student who was subjected to negative press coverage in a viral video, announced he settled a defamation lawsuit against the Washington Post for its coverage. He wrote the on a tweet uh, today, I believe, that uh, he has settled the lawsuit, $250 million defamation lawsuit against Washington Post. And there are, according to his attorney, there are still a number of uh, outlets, including the NBC and the New York Times, that have yet to settle with him. But if he brought a lawsuit of this, this magnitude of claim, um, there's no specifics on the settlement. I doubt there will be, most likely. But uh, most recall the fact that this took place last year and uh, there are these uh, Catholic students who were in D.C. for the March of Life and uh, the video was selectively edited to make it appear as if they were harassing the Native American activist Nathan Phillips. But uh, here, here you have the media once again really being exposed for what they are, for propaganda outlets. And uh, when, you, when one looks at a longer version of this video, that was in fact not taking place. In fact, uh, these, uh, these students were being set up more or less uh, to make it appear as if they were harassing this individual. In Washington Post... This is um, a newspaper now, of course, it's owned by Jeff Bezos. And uh, going way back to when it was owned by Eugene Mayer, the father of um, Elizabeth, of Catherine, excuse me, Catherine Graham. Uh, he went on, he, he was uh, a Federal Reserve Bank governor, went on to become head of the World Bank. And, of course, uh, the Washington Post has a very long, sordid history and entanglement with intelligence. Uh, there was the very controversial death of, um, of Catherine Graham's former, uh, former husband, who purportedly killed himself. And uh, that, um, that story is still very murky. That was back in 1963. Now, I'm blanking on the first name of uh, of that Graham uh, individual, but um, nevertheless, uh, he was a media critic ahead of his time, and I have actually done some research on that. Did that a couple of years ago, and that's available at memoryholeblog.com. The untimely death of um, the uh, publisher of the Washington Post and the spouse of Catherine Catherine Graham. Second story here, U.S. attorneys, U.S. attorney states that 18 more are arrested in Portland on charges brought by the United States. You look at this story here from the, the uh, Associated Press and the caption of, for a protester, the caption of this photograph reads, Medic treats Black Lives Matter protester Lacey Wambalaba. Well, are these people really protesters? I brought this up a day or two ago. Uh, these people are using explosives. They're using projectiles. Uh, they are assailing a federal courthouse. Why is there this attention being paid to the uh, to the courthouse specifically? Well, they want to they want to shut down the rule of law. Uh, they're targeting a, um, a, a federal outlet, a federal courthouse. One of the more interesting things about this story as well is the fact that uh, the a U.S. district judge has uh, interceded for journalists and observers. U.S. Judge Michael Simon made a ruling that um, apparently the U.S. attorneys were asking that um, 
journalists and observers be excluded from uh, from the scene of these melees that are that are taking place, these confrontations, and uh, the judge ruled in favor of the journalists. It says Judge Michael Simon made his ruling about media and observers a day after Portland's mayor, Mayor Ted Wheeler, was tear gassed by federal agents while making an appearance outside the courthouse during raucous demonstrations. Simon had previously ruled that journalistic and legal observers are exempt from police orders requiring protesters to disperse once an unlawful assembly has been declared. U.S. lawyers intervene, saying journalists should have to leave when ordered. And uh, this J- Jan Carson of the AC, the American Communist Lawyers Union, excuse me, the American Civil Liberties Union, <laughs> Of Oregon, her the executive director said this order is a victory for the rule of law. Well, as you can tell from this uh, this coverage, all of the major media are depicting this as being a civil rights protest. When in fact uh, these individuals are are insurgents. I mean, they are uh, domestic terrorists, more or less. And um, it. Um, the coverage really leaves much to be desired. But uh, what's new uh, in the uh, the Trump area era? This has been going on since 2016, the negative coverage of the Trump uh, administration. Speaking of Black Lives Matter, a story from the Catholic News Agency from uh, July 23rd. Uh, churches burned, people beheaded in Mozambique's escalating extremist violence. Here's a story that's been completely blacked out by um, by major uh, news media in the West, and it's reported on here by CNA. A Catholic bishop has deplored the world's indifference to escalating extremist violence in northern Mozambique, where multiple churches have been burnt, people beheaded, young girls kidnapped, and hundreds of thousands of people displaced by the violence. Bishop Luis Fernando Liboa, Lisboa of Mozambique's Pemba Diocese has been an outspoken advocate for the needs of more than 200,000 people who have been displaced by violent insurgency. In June, there were reports that insurgents had beheaded 15 people in a week, yet the bishop said that the crisis in Mozambique has largely been met with indifference from the rest of the world. Says Bishop Lisboa, the world has no idea yet what is happening because of indifference. He says, we do not have the solidarity that there should be. And he's speaking to a news agency from Portugal. The story continues during Holy Week this year. This is back in April. Insurgents perpetrated attacks on seven towns and villages in Cabo Delgado province, burning down a church on Good Friday and killing 52 young people who refused to join the terrorist group. The bishop um, told, stated in this report, the bishop noted in April that extremists had already burned five or six local chapels as well as some mosques. He said that the historic Sacred Heart of Jesus mission in Nangolo was also attacked this year. Say, perhaps these, uh, some of these uh, activists, these insurgents, they're called insurgents uh, here in this report, uh, they might be able to... uh, to get some work with some activists here in the U.S. uh, that uh, appear to be terrorizing and burning churches and tearing down monuments uh, and the like. But I bring this up in part because, okay, so do black lives matter? Uh, Well, I guess it depends on which continent you are. Uh, They uh, certainly don't matter in Mozambique. Uh, They do matter in the United States uh, if you are waging a communist-style revolution. If you are, for example, a, um, a major U.S. company and you're willing to, uh, to throw, say, $1.7 billion collectively uh, towards this, uh, this rebellion that's going on in the United States, whereas um, there are lots of people, you know, dozens of people who are dying in Mozambique and being terrorized and displaced, hundreds of thousands being terrorized and displaced, no news coverage whatsoever, complete, complete and utter news blackout. So it makes you wonder, what are the real priorities of our corporate uh, corporate news media here in in the West, as well as the uh, the purportedly nonprofit uh, foundation uh, driven foundation funded media uh, like uh, NPR and BBC. 
Another poll closer to home, new poll says that 62%, or I should say the first poll actually, because I have another poll to discuss. And I have these stories in a in another sort of arrangement here. New poll, 62% say the political climate prevents them from sharing political views. This is a Cato Institute uh, poll that came out a couple of days ago. 50% of strong liberals support firing Trump donors. 36% uh, of strong conservatives support firing Biden donors. 32% are worried about missing out on job opportunities because of their political opinions. The overall thrust of this is that um, the people generally that that were were polled by Cato state that um, that they're reluctant to to state their political views. Um, they're they're uncomfortable. Uh, they fear, you know, I'm, I'm sure probably social expulsion, if not worse, perhaps uh, perhaps violence these days. Um, Two thousand Americans were polled, and 62 percent of them say that the political climate presently prevents them from saying things that they believe uh, others might find them others might find offensive uh, this is up from 2017 when 58 percent agreed with this statement uh, majorities of democrats 52 percent independents 59 percent and republicans 77 percent all agree that they have political opinions that they are afraid to share um, and this is a very, very interesting and telling statement um, evidence. Of course, polls can be skewed. Polls can be um, altered in, in favor of the given institution that is conducting them or the organization or the corporation that is paying for them. Uh, with, with that said, assuming there's a level playing field that's represented here, and I believe that there most likely is, um, this is indicative of a um, of an of of a political electorate of a polity that is being intimidated, and it would appear from from the results of this poll that uh, more conservatives feel uh, intimidated, um, afraid to speak their mind, even though they have a partial majority in Congress, and they have a president uh, in the White House. They have a Republican president uh, in the White House, conservative president. Um, so it's very telling. It is uh, really quite telling. Another poll having to do with public health or what passes for public health these days, an AP NORC poll, three in four Americans back requiring masks to be worn in public. And this is skewed also along political lines. Democrats, 89% of Democrats favor uh, mask wearing in public while well, only 58 percent of Republicans do 27 percent of Republicans uh, do not feel comfortable or do not uh, seek to wear masks in public but overall 86 percent of uh, those polled in this particular poll are uh, hewing towards wearing masks not wearing a mask to me poses a greater risk of spreading the COVID, said Darius Blevins, a 33-year-old Republican-leaning independent from Christianburg, Virginia, who works in bank operations. He says he wears a mask because, quote, it's much more effective than not wearing a mask, unquote. The article accompanying this uh, data says, it's an opinion echoed by data analyst James Shaw, an independent who tilts Democratic. If you understand the facts, there is really no issue, said Shaw. 56 of Noble, Illinois. The data is crystal clear. For months, the article continues, for month, months, health officials have said several simple steps could save lives. Washing hands frequently, staying away from crowds, especially while indoors, and, pulling, and putting on a mask when heading out to the supermarket the office or a restaurant and despite heated rhetoric about masks in some corners 95 percent of democrats 75 percent of republicans said they're wearing face coverings when leaving the house overall 86 percent of americans including the independent sample said that they were doing so compared with 73 percent in may once again for a uh, for a virus that has a overwhelming huge uh, recovery rate and is primarily confined to those that have compromised immune systems that we find in 
nursing homes over the age of 70, 75, 80 years old. Finally, from Popular Mechanics, the story uh, appeared elsewhere this week. Popular Mechanics wrote something up on the fact that Kentucky Fried Chicken is 3D printing chicken nuggets. Kentucky Fried Chicken could soon become Kentucky Fake Chicken. The restaurant chain is experimenting with a new kind of meat, 3D bioprinted chicken nuggets. That basically means KFC is using chicken cells and plant-based material to create a new kind of nugget. Welcome to the future of fast food. The project aims to create the world's first laboratory-produced chicken nuggets. KFC said in a recent press release they will be as close as possible in both taste and appearance to the original KFC product while being more environmentally friendly to produce than ordinary meat. 3D bioprinting solutions, a Moscow-based technology company, will develop the chicken. To make it happen, researchers will use chicken cells and plant-based material to create a chicken proxy that should be, be pretty similar in taste and texture. KFC will provide the breading and spices so the scientists can nail the chicken's traditional buttery flavor and crispy texture. That's all for today, for today's news summary. You know, um, I have gotten some feedback from you, and I do appreciate that. appreciate you commenting below wherever this, um, wherever this brief news brief appears, uh, liking it uh, so that we can actually get our numbers up on YouTube and reach a wider audience. And I may be relaxing this, um, this series, the news brief, to every other day. I'm doing this, uh, dating this July 24th, 25th, because I probably will not do one over the weekend. Uh, but we'll see, because some very interesting and important news does come out on Friday afternoon, Friday evening. It's released by organizations, by the government, what have you, because they just want for it to sink uh, from, the, from the public eye. Uh, so maybe we'll do something over the weekend. Maybe we'll just eventually make this a weekly uh, news, uh, news brief. But it's up to you um, what uh, what you'd like to hear. And uh, please do uh, email us. You can find the email address and contact information at memoryholeblog.org. And once again, please do uh, not forget to uh, like the video, to leave a comment. We do greatly appreciate that. And as we continue, as we proceed, with like with everything else, uh, we'll get uh, more in the knack of doing these. And uh, they'll be a bit smoother. Um, and uh, and the like. So uh, once again, we do appreciate your support, and uh, we really do enjoy uh, the additional um, cause, the additional reason to go ahead and delve into important news stories. And there's so much more out there that we can actually um, than we actually have time for. So until next time, take care. God bless, and we will see you soon. Bye bye.